quite an interesting beginning to 2019. Some people bring me guns sometimes that they say have blown up. And um, of course, what does blown up mean? All kinds of different things. But one of the more common mistakes that I've seen over the years is that people load one cartridge in the chamber of a rifle that the rifle isn't chambered for. So I, I had a really good one and um, I've, I've kind of partly included the original elements and I also included some things so it's easier for you to understand. So I think what we do is we will just um, go right to the cartridges themselves and hopefully we can film this properly for you. So this is this is a brass case and this is the the head of the case including the rim. You can see that the this has blown completely off of the brass case and if you're wondering why this is here well this is a seven millimeter Remington Magnum um, but it's supposed to be a 270 Weatherby I just don't have any 270 Weatherby loaded ammo uh, but the fellow that owned the rifle did this will all make sense to you in a few minutes this is a 303 British cartridge and it's loaded and, and of course the the seven millimeter Remington Magnum is loaded and the 270 Weatherby is very similar to the seven millimeter Remington Magnum this bullet is 0.284 inches in diameter and if we had a 270 Weatherby next to it the bullet is 0.277 and I believe the 303 British is 0.311 of an inch that's all from memory you can check that I might be off and this believe it or not is a 303 British case so the fellow took this cartridge and loaded it in a 270 Weatherby rifle. Now, obviously he didn't do that intentionally. And when you get these kinds of things um, come in, you try to figure out what happened and why did it happen. And if you take the base of this cartridge and place it against the base of the 7 mag, which is the same base diameter as the 270 Weatherby, uh, you find that they're close enough so that the bolt picked up the 303 British, fed this cartridge into this chamber, and the 270 Weatherby is very similar, if not identical, except for the shoulder. The, the Weatherby cartridges has, ha, cartridge has a double radius. But anyway, those details don't matter. What matters is this cartridge was able to fit into this chamber, of course, because it's smaller, and the bolt and extractor held this 303 British firmly enough against the bolt face for the primer to be hit by the firing pin. So we can tip this over and you can see that the primer was properly indented by the firing pin of the rifle. When that happened, this hit, well the pressure would have increased dramatically in microseconds because the smokeless powder increases its burning rate. It's not an explosive. It just increases its burning rate as the pressure increases. Uh, finally, the brass spread because it's look at the look at the amount of room that this 303 has to fill. Brass can expand. As you can see, this brass actually did really well. It filled out this entire case area. Finally, though, the distance between the bull face and the base of the cartridge was too great so this blew away this was in the it, this was actually stuck in the action and this piece was stuck in the chamber so this is the left this is how much this 303 british case and you can see this is the same as this um, as the as the magnum case and uh, so actually what this video is about is how to remove this from the chamber and I've seen quite a few of these over the years. So some people take chisels, some people take screwdrivers. Um, they try all kinds of things to get this out of this chamber. And um, you know, you can you have a gunsmith look at the gun. Most of the time, when you see this kind of situation, you think the gun is wrecked. Sometimes that happens. But bear in mind that the reason this ruptured is that it's unsupported in the gun. So the brass alone was holding the pressure. If the brass lets go and this blows out, that means the gun was not exposed to excess pressure. It was the case that was unsupported. So there might be brass and a lot of carbon and a lot of black and the gun looks dramatic and the, 
you know, the person, the owner is shaken up, but the gun most of the time is fine. And all you have to do is get this out of the chamber somehow. So um, what I found over time is actually quite a simple solution. This, this is hard to get a hold of. You, it's very hard to chisel at it. You, if you try to poke at it, um, it, access is difficult. And I'm gonna take an aside now. See this action? This is a Mauser action. This is a Siamese Mauser. And you can see how open this is. So if this barrel, this is the Weatherby 270 barrel. Now this will not fit in the Mauser action. And I took this out because you can see um, how this would be stuck in that. So pound that in with a hammer and then tell somebody to get it out. It's not so easy and the pressure is great. Now I took the barrel out so that you can see what's what, but the average person probably doesn't have a barrel ice and all, you know, whatever. Not that it's that complicated, but um, this is so you can see what's what. So that's stuck in there. And how do you get it out? Now, if you had a Mauser, uh, sometimes you can pick at it with a screwdriver because there's access, um, which is why the Mauser is such a great action. But if you have one of these modern things, take a look at this ejection port. Um, how do you get at anything in there? You can't really work on the, on, on the action. So then everybody says, well, if you have something stuck in the chamber, just take a cleaning rod or something else and come from the muzzle. That's good advice. But how many people have a cleaning rod when you're in the middle of the bush or, you know, 500 miles in the middle of nowhere? It's, this is way too small. You can't get it at anything. So that's why, uh, once again, the Mauser is the right way to go. But getting back to the problem at hand, so you've got, you've got this brass in there. It's been pressure fit into the Weatherby chamber. And I don't know what the chamber pressures were before the brass failed, but I mean, it could have been 15, 16,000 pounds per square inch, way below uh, normal operating pressure, but still you've got an odd challenge. So the, a lot of people are picking at this. I've seen chambers ruined. They try to drill this out. They take Dremels. So you can see the simple solution. I mean, when I was a lot younger, I used to put Kleenex in. I would just put Kleenex into the case until this was sealed. And then very carefully, I would pour epoxy in to fill the brass case. In the meantime, they've come up with all kinds of epoxy putties. Um, the only thing you have to be careful is don't get anything outside of the brass. You want, you, you're basically just putting something inside the brass case so that your cleaning rod can hit something. And I'll try to do this properly. We don't have to, uh, you can keep focusing on the chamber. So I'm just feeding the, the uh, cleaning rod from the muzzle. I'll try to hold it steady. And then by, you, you tap it and there comes the brass. Now, this is a lot easier uh, because this, I'm, I'm reenacting this whole thing. And like I said, you won't have access because I took this barrel off. But this is the 270 Weatherby barrel. Um, and some of these brass situations, when they're in there, they kind of, because of the pressure, they sort of resist arrest. Like they don't want to come out. And so you, sometimes you have to pound at them. Now, if from the, from the muzzle with the cleaning rod, um, if that happens, there's another, another little trick I learned. Um, when this is sitting in there and your epoxy is dry, take some of that um, Ballistol or uh, WD-40, one of those, I use the Ballistol, and just spray it in here with the muzzle down and don't wait too long um, because the Ballistol will get between the brass case and the chamber. But if you wait longer, the ballista will get between the epoxy and the brass case. So you have to put it in there and then, and then take your cleaning rod and you'll find the ballista finds its way into the gap between the brass and then it simply pops out. And now you have um, at least, you're, you've got your rifle back and you, you've got your chamber back. So then the question is, what damage did this catastrophic failure cause? And for that, depends on how qualified you think you are. There are only so many things that can go wrong with a bolt-action rifle. 
the lugs of the bull could be damaged, the lug recesses in the barrel or in the receiver, depends if the bolt locks into the barrel, in the Weatherby the, lo the, the lugs lock into the receiver, but in some guns as I explained in other videos, the lugs lock into the barrel. So you have to study those things and look at them. What's my personal experience? I've never seen a, a decent bolt action rifle, a Mauser or any other modern rifle, certainly not a Weatherby, uh, fail because of this event. The pressures just never get high enough. It looks really bad, like I said earlier, and everybody's scared and the people at the range, if this happens, they're going to notice because there's smoke and sometimes stuff gets into the eyes of the shooter but this is not all that uncommon this one is particularly dramatic just because this case doesn't look at all like this case but that's how far brass can expand so if you have any questions about how to accomplish this i think there are other videos there must be on the web uh, uh just fill this brass to give your cleaning rod something to pick up and if it's stuck, just keep at it and maybe use that ballistol stuff. But I thought that's worth a video because it does happen. And when it happens, it seems really bad. And you don't necessarily have to lose the rifle to this kind of thing. And um, I fully expect the rifle after it's put back together to work fine. So I think that's, that's a kind of interesting video. And I snuck in um, a, a little compliment for the open... Um, action. I, I actually um, wrote Tika when they came out with their T3 and it's fantastic and uh, so they solved a lot but the ejection port way too small and I'm sure a lot of other people wrote them as well because the T3X has uh, a, a better ejection port. Last thing I'll leave you with is one of the reasons they do this this closed action thing is this makes the action more rigid and theoretically more accurate but this is a Remington 783 which is quite an accurate rifle um, but it, when you're hunting you don't need that kind of accuracy these manufacturers are always in a kind of catch-22 the people go to the range expecting the bullets to be one on top of the next but you don't need bullets to do that when you're going hunting so they they do these things this should be more open things go wrong and when they go wrong you should be able to get it. Your cartridges in the magazine, cartridges, something stuck. This is a dramatic failure, but a lot of times, for whatever reason, a little bit of, of uh, pine tar on your brass and your ejector jumps out and leaves the brass case in. And if you don't have a cleaning rod and you can't get at anything, but with a Mauser, you can reach in and get your case out and then keep hunting. Anyway, those are just things that probably most of you know. But I thought I'd review anyway, and certainly this uh, 2019 uh, failure with a 303 and a 270 Weatherby um, is kind of a notable thing. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please join me on Patreon, and please subscribe, and we'll keep making videos. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.